Hi there, F-150 owners. Today on your 2019 Ford F-150, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Demco's Air Force One Supplemental Braking System. This braking system is designed to work with motorhomes that have air brakes and is my number one top pick for braking systems if you have air brakes. Now, if your motorhome has hydraulic brakes, then I would recommend Demco's Stay and Play Duo. That's my top pick for a hydraulic braking motorhome. But since ours has air brakes here, we've installed it on our F-150 and it's gonna be a truly proportional braking system that will apply the pedal as hard as you're applying it in the motorhome. That's gonna give you a nice seamless brake performance because as you're hitting it harder in there, it's gonna apply harder here to make you both to make both your vehicle and your motorhome stop seamlessly with one another. It's also really nice if you're in some heavy traffic and you're just barely kind of touching the brake here and there. Same thing in the vehicle here. It's barely gonna be applying the brake in here. So that's gonna ensure we don't excessively wear the brakes in our vehicle and we get the best braking performance. Also included with your kit, you'll receive a breakaway switch. That's going to apply the pedal if we have a catastrophic disconnect. The cable here is connected between our breakaway switch pin and the hitch on our motorhome. So in the event we did have that catastrophic disconnect, the cable here would pull the pin out of our breakaway switch and that would apply the brakes for our braking system to help it come to a safe stop. And so we know that our system's working properly. There's an LED indicator located in the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that breakaway switch pin now, which will apply the pedal. If the pedal is actually applied, it will turn that light on. And looky there, we heard the pedal apply. We can see the light, so we know that our system is working properly. I'm gonna reinsert the pin, and that deactivates the system. We saw the light go out, so it looks like everything is gonna be A-OK -okay if we have a catastrophic disconnect. Now that we've covered some of the features of our braking system, why don't you follow along with me, and we'll show you how to get it installed. This is going to be a pretty big installation. If you're doing this at home, it could be done on a single Saturday, but I would probably give yourself a Saturday and a Sunday to get this completed. The vehicle's gonna take you longer than your motor home, but you're also gonna have to be able to lift that motor home up, which can be time consuming as well. So the big part of this install is making sure that you're prepared and ready, and you could easily get this done in a weekend. Let's get it going. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle. We first wanna get all the major components mounted up, so that way we know where we're gonna be routing all of our wires and our air lines and our vacuum lines and everything. So first thing, we'll get those mounted up. Right here at the very front of the vehicle, we've put our breakaway switch here. We actually just kinda of bent the uh, bracket there that's pre-attached to your breakaway switch, the little tab on it. We removed the screw located here, slid it through the breakaway switch hole, and then just tightened it down to get that mounted up. For your connector here at the front of the vehicle, you'll put the male fitting on the vehicle side, the females for the motorhome side. We just put this right into the plastic. We used the hardware that it came included with, and we just kind of held this up here. Used a paint stick to make a couple marks for the holes. Used a quarter inch drill bit to drill out the two holes in the plastic shield. And then we just slid the hardware down through. The hardware is gonna be a bolt followed by a fender washer go through all of our components and then we just put an nylon locking nut to secure that in place. Same thing with the other screw. Then just behind our bracket here we drilled another hole in the middle between the two screws about an inch back and that's just for our airline to be able to pass through the panel to plug into the fitting here. Our next component is going to be right on the other side of our paneling here so let's head underneath. So we're just on the other side of our bumper now and that's where we mounted the main operating unit. We mounted this up by drilling two holes and the metal strip here at the bottom, and then just using fasteners that we provided to get that mounted up. We just used quarter inch fasteners. It's not a heavy, uh, real heavy component or anything, so that's gonna be fine to get that mounted up there. Uh, we did use washers, lock washers and nuts to secure it all together, just to make sure we had enough meat on there to grab everything. So now we've got all of our outside main components mounted up. We can go ahead and start getting some of this stuff out here hooked up. So first thing we're going to need to hook up our air lines. So you're going to notice you'll have two air line connection points. You'll have an air in and an air out. The air in is going to come from our motor home. We, need, we have air brakes on the motor home. It's going to send air from the motor home to our unit to tell it when to activate and also to charge up the system to make it work. So this is coming from that quick connect fitting, the male one that we just talked about right up on front. That hole that we drilled, that third hole right here, you can see the two head of the, the screws holding the bracket on, and then there's that third hole where our air line pops out. It just wraps around and goes to the air in. The air out is gonna be 
is going to go inside the vehicle where we'll attach it to our pedal from there. So you just attach it to air out. We run up to our factory wiring. We then go beyond our core support here. And then from there we go up to get towards the grommet that we'll pass through. We'll show you that grommet here in a little bit, but that pretty much gets you up to where that grommet is. So now we've got our air lines hooked up here. Our breakaway switch right here, before we mounted that up, we did also drill a hole right at the top of the panel there at the back to be able to pass the wires through for the breakaway switch. Your breakaway switch will have an orange and a black wire on it. The black wire on your breakaway switch, you're going to hook to one of the black wires coming off of your unit. It doesn't matter which one. The unit just, uh, just needs to be hooked up to the breakaway switch on the black wire there. The other black wire on our unit will go to ground. And we just hooked it to a ring terminal and used this bolt right over here to get ground for the unit. Next, we're gonna hook up the red wire, or the, I'm sorry, the orange wire from our breakaway switch. This needs to go up towards our battery so we can get power from the battery. That way, whenever the pin pulls for the breakaway switch, the breakaway switch will complete the circuit, send voltage down the black wire to the unit. The other side of the unit's already grounded, so that'll kick our unit on full blast to help our vehicle come to a safe stop. So this wire just goes up, we follow our factory wiring across towards the passenger side, and then we go up to our battery from there. So now we've got all this stuff hooked up down here. There's one more component we're gonna talk about, and that's our vacuum line. This will hook into the brake vacuum booster line on your truck here. So we take the air line that comes with our, I'm sorry, the vacuum line that comes included with our kit. We cut about, that's eh, about two and a half, maybe three inches of line. We slide that on the vacuum line connection. Next, we put a check valve in place that comes in your kit. You wanna put the black side of the check valve towards the unit. And then from here, this is gonna pretty much just follow our airline over, back, and then up, so we can make the connection near our brake vacuum booster up top. So we can go ahead and head up top now. We're on the passenger side. Here's our battery over here. This is that red wire that's coming from our breakaway switch down below. This does come in your kit. That's, uh, we use it to extend the orange wire to be able to get this far up here. It's gonna connect to your battery positive. You'll notice we've got a fuse harness in line. This also comes with our kit. So when you get your fuse harness, it is gonna be looped together. So just cut it right in the middle. One side, you're gonna crimp on a ring terminal and attach it to the battery post here. The other side, we're gonna connect a butt connector to, and I highly recommend for all these connections here in our engine compartment, you use heat shrink butt connectors. Uh, they don't come with your kit, but you can get them here at e-trailer, and they're gonna keep out moisture to ensure you got a long-lasting connection. The ones that come in your kit probably won't even make it a year before they get all corroded out. The other wire you see here is gonna go inside to light our monitor light. So when you're hooking this up, take that red wire, strip it back and push it into one end of uh, the other end of that butt connector there. And then also take the brown wire that comes in your kit, strip it back and poke it in to that butt connector as well and crimp those together. We can then take the brown wire and route that across towards the other side because our grommet's gonna be located over there. So we just kind of zip tie it up to that factory wiring and work it across there. We're now over on the driver's side and this tube and this is our air box right here where you change your air filter and stuff like that. So down in this opening, if we look down in here, this is our vacuum line that we hook to the unit. And also right here is the air line that needs to get routed inside. So just so you can see where both of those are coming up. The air line, I went around the air box to hide it to go towards the grommet. While the vacuum line, I stayed kind of here and zip tied it following, uh, I zip tied it to the bracket here for the brake lines. I don't like to zip tie to the brake line. So it's on the plastic of the bracket, not the actual brake line. And then it comes up and it goes towards our vacuum line here coming from our booster. There's our booster there. So in order to attach it to this line, we did cut out a pretty good chunk of line from about here to here. It already kind of makes uh, about a 45 degree turn from here to this portion of the line here. We cut that whole 45 degree section out. And then we did have to purchase some additional line that does not come in our kit because the vacuum line on your Ford truck here is gonna be a larger diameter than the line that comes in your kit. So you'll notice, if you look here, this vacuum line is a, is a larger line than the line that comes in your kit, which is these. This is a half inch inside 
diameter line. So you will need to get a little bit of this. You probably only need, you know, about six inches of it. You'll take the larger line that you purchased. We're going to slide this onto the factory vacuum line. We'll use the hose clamps that come provided with our kit to clamp it onto that line. From there, you're going to slide in the adapters that come in your kit. And they're just a barbed fitting, but it's larger on one side and smaller on the other. The larger side goes into that half inch line. The smaller side, you're going to cut out a small section of your vacuum line that comes with your kit. Again, this is only probably about two and a half, maybe three inches. You'll then put the smaller end into that vacuum line. We're going to put a, another check valve in place with the black side facing towards our engine. So that's this way is our engine side. That's where the black side is. And then the, the kind of clear or white uh, side, whichever you want to call it there, this is going to go towards our booster. We have another small section of line that comes in our kit. That's going to go to the T-fitting. And so there's a T-fitting here. This is the line that goes towards the operating unit that we just showed you routed up. We go to another small section of line that goes to another one of the adapters that come in our kit that takes it to up, steps it up to the larger size hose. We slide it onto the factory line and then secure it with the hose clamp. And that gets us tapped in. So that way we've got power assist with our supplemental braking system. So now we're still on the driver's side here. We're kind of up on the corner. We're on the other side of our brake booster behind the air box here. Here's that vacuum line that's coming from the operating unit that we routed around the air box. There's a grommet located right down in there next to your vacuum booster. And kind of at the top of that grommet, there's like a little nipple that's on there. We just took our razor knife and we just cut the end of that nipple off. And then you can poke your lines through. Now the other side does is sealed off as well. So we took our razor knife and slit the other side. There's kind of a little round uh, mark there that kind of shows you so it lines up with that nipple. The brown wire also goes through there to go inside so we can power up the reed switch and get our indicator light working properly. So here we are inside. I just want to see so you can see the grommet there where our wires pass through. We've got some components we need to mount up though before we get back to our wires and our hose. We know that they come through the grommet. So now we got two components on the inside here we need to mount. We need to mount our actuating cylinder which clamps onto our pedal. So when you get the cylinder, the bracket and the, the nuts are going to be on there. Remove all the nuts. You can use a 3-8 socket to do so and then slide the bracket off of there. You'll then take your cylinder, slide it onto your pedal. I slid it onto the driver's side of the pedal to keep it away from the gas pedal, kind of keep it away from your feet. Then slide the bracket back on and then secure it with the nuts. When you're securing this, I recommend just using the 3-8 socket in your hand and tighten them down because you don't want to over tighten this and bend the bracket. If you tighten it down as tight as you can get it by hand with the socket, uh, using it just in your hand with no other tool, that should get it plenty tight. Like this thing ain't going nowhere. After you've got it mounted onto your pedal, coming out of the back of your cylinder, you'll have a cable that's going to go to an anchor. The anchor you need to mount onto the firewall to give us a point that will allow this cylinder to pull the pedal towards the firewall to activate it. So we did take our razor knife and we cut some of the insulation out, a little square there. I'd say it's probably about an inch and a half square that we cut out. And then we took a self-tapping screw and while taking the cable and our anchor, we kind of held it so it's straight in line. We marked that spot and then we ran a self-tapping screw through the hole in the anchor to get it mounted onto the firewall. We then pulled the excess cable through our anchor and then we tightened down the set screw with a number four Allen key. When tightening this down, you want to make sure you don't over tighten it because you can't actually damage the cable if you over tighten it. I found that if you tighten it down until it's about flush with the anchor, that seems to be about the right tightness to keep it secure, but not too tight to where it'll damage it. We also want to check the play. Once you've got it secured, we want to have just a little bit of play. So check your pedal, make sure your pedal's not being pulled. Uh, we don't want to have our pedal applied all the time. And then also check your cylinder. So we're kind of just pulling on our pedal towards us, making sure that it's got a little movement that we can pull towards us. And then we're going to take the cylinder here and we're going to pull it towards us as well. Just make sure that it's got a little bit of play on your pedal. So once you've got that mounted up, you have a reed switch that comes in the same bag as your cylinder here. Slide the reed switch in the little slot here and then use a very small flat screwdriver to tighten it down to hold it in place. This will have three wires coming off of it that we'll be hooking up here in a minute, but these are, this is going to actuate 
the indicator light. So let's get the indicator light mounted up and the wire router down here and then we'll show you how to get those correctly connected. The indicator light that comes in your kit is gonna mount onto the back side of your mirror or some people do like to mount it on the dash down low there. It just kind of depends. It's, in my opinion, a little easier to see on the mirror here, but it also depends kind of what you've got up here. Uh, some options can potentially cover that up. So once you get it mounted up, we just peel off the adhesive backing and stick it onto our mirror. We also wanna make sure we don't cover any sensors up. Right here, there's a sensor on the back of our mirror. I don't know, maybe a camera, it could be a rain sensor, but there's a lot of different types of sensors that could potentially be here. So just make sure you're not covering anything up. If you feel a small cavity or opening, there's probably some type of sensor there. We'll then take our wire and just route it up into the headliner. And you just, we're just poking it up into the headliner there, just like that all the way down. We then just poke it behind the A-pillar trim here, just kind of poking it down behind that. And then we just poke it behind the weather stripping. The weather stripping, we don't even take the weather stripping all the way off. I'm just kind of peeling it back and I was just poking the wire down in there, running it all the way down. Once you hit this point right here, where this seam is, this is your hood release lever right here. You can peel this back and then you can just stick a little like a plastic trim panel tool in there and you can pop this out just a little bit enough to poke the wire in and the wire just comes out right here. I just poked it kind of around the corner there to help keep things out of the way. These wires here we got hanging down so you can see them. We'll be zip tying those up to keep them out of the way. But beforehand we need to talk about how this all works. So on our reed switch here we've got three wires coming off the reed switch. You've got a brown, a black, and a blue. Off the indicator light, you have a red and a black. The red wire will connect to the black wire from the reed switch. The black wire from the indicator light will hook to the blue wire from the reed switch, and it also needs to hook to a ground wire. So we use the tri connection that comes in the kit, and we use a small piece of the black wire that comes in your kit as well. You do get a little bit of extra black wire, and we connect that on there. The other end of this black wire has a ring terminal on it. It's connected to a factory ground stud located just up here. And then lastly, we'll need to hook up our brown wire from the reed switch. That's gonna to hook to the brown wire that we routed inside through the grommet. That's gonna power up our reed switch. You'll know your reed switch is working properly if you take your reed switch here and we pull the switch out, we can see it lights up. For the motorhome side of our Air Force One installation, you'll wanna start with your vehicle lifted up. We're using a set of lifts here at the shop, but if you're doing this at home, you can use your leveling jacks to raise up the vehicle. That'll give you enough room so you can get underneath there. When you use your leveling jacks though, to support the vehicle, you don't want to go underneath until you've put proper supports underneath of it. So you wanna make sure you grab some jack stands and put those under the frame as well, because we don't wanna just trust our hydraulics to support the weight of the vehicle while we're underneath. So now we got it supported, we're gonna head underneath. And we're gonna be right at about where the, just in front of the rear axle. The first thing we're going to want to do is mount our tank for our system. To get this tank mounted up, it's extremely easy on this motorhome because the relay valve that we've got right here, just between the two brake canisters in front of our rear axle, the, that has a bracket that it's attached to that has two bolts that runs down through this cross beam right here. The spacing of those two bolts happen to line up with the slotted holes on our tank. So we simply just remove the nuts from these two bolts, slid our tank with the bracket that comes pre-attached to it right up over those bolts and then just reattach the nuts right on top of it. And that's gonna get this positioned in a very convenient location extremely quickly and easily. After you've got your tank mounted up, we'll then need to tap into the existing airlines on our motor home. We're gonna need an air supply to go in to our tank here and we're also going to need metered air to properly send the signals to the back for our Air Force One braking system that's gonna be on our vehicle. So to do this, first thing you'll wanna do is identify the two lines. Uh, it's usually pretty easy to identify them. Your supply line's usually gonna be your thickest line. It's often green in color and it's always gonna go into the first relay block. So this is our second relay block. Our first relay block is located just above it. So this first relay block has the supply air that comes into it here, that large green hose. That's our supply air. Our metered air is always gonna come from the first relay block and it's gonna come down to the second relay block. That second relay block is always gonna be attached to the brake canisters. So that's an easy way to help you identify that. 
So now that you've kind of identified the hoses, you know which ones they are, we don't want to just cut these hoses open because our supply line is going to have supply air in it. So we don't want to have supply air pressure when we cut the line. That's going to be fairly dangerous having a pair of cutters in your hand with the lines wanting to come apart from all that pressure. So we want to drain the system to do this just without the vehicle running. Just uh, press the brakes repeatedly and each, each press of the brakes is going to exhaust some air out of the system and eventually you'll get all the air out. You can use your gauges to help determine it. Once you get down below about 5 to 10 pounds, that should be low enough to where you could safely cut the line. After you've drained your system from the supply air, you can cut your supply line. We cut it a little bit further away from where it connected to the relay valve just because it was a little easier to access there. When cutting your lines, you want to make sure you use hose cutters. You can get those here at e-trailer. That way they ensure that you don't pinch the line. It uses a razor blade to give us a nice good clean cut. You want to make sure you're perpendicular with the line so that way when you press it into the quick connect, the line just slides right into those. It'll seal properly. After you've got that one in place, the small line you see here is what comes in our kit. We're going to cut off a small portion of this line and plug it into the quarter inch fitting end. That's the smaller one. And then this is going to run down to our tank and it's going to connect into the supply fitting on our tank. And that's going to have the arrow going in showing that air is being supplied to the tank this direction. Next year we'll do our metered air. Now again we talked about how it's typically the line that's between the two relay valves like this, but if you're unsure on if you've got the correct line, what you can do is while your air is drained out of your system, you can go ahead and disconnect the line that you suspect is your metered air. Then you can have an assistant start the motor home to build air pressure back up. It should be able to build air pressure back up because there should be no air coming out of this line if it is the metered air line. Once air pressure is built back up, you can have your assistant press the brakes. While he's depressing the brakes, or he or she is depressing the brakes, air should come out of this line. If it does, that tells you that you've got that correct line, that's your metered air. So once you've identified it there, we can just cut this one in half. This is going to be a 3 8 thick line, so you can also use the size to help you determine you've got the correct line. And we're going to slide this into our quick connect fitting here as well. This one's going to be that smaller size, the 3 8 so that way it's going to match up with our line. We'll then take the quarter inch line that comes in our kit and make another small jumper that goes from the metered air to the metered air connection on our tank, which is going to be on the opposite side of the tank from the supply air, and it's going to go into the uh, little valve like this here. The final fitting on our tank is the swivel end here. The swivel end is the output that's going to go to the fitting at the back of the vehicle, or the back of our motorhome, where we're going to make our connection to connect to the vehicle to activate the Air Force One in the vehicle. So from here, we're just going to use a pretty considerable portion of the line that comes in our kit to slide into this fitting and then route this all the way back to the back of the vehicle. When you're routing your line, you want to make sure you avoid any moving components like your suspension and you want to make sure you avoid anything excessively hot such as your exhaust. I always try to follow the pre-run lines that are already existing on the motorhome because those are already routed in a location that they're not going to receive any damage. So if you look at our line here, we just kind of come out, we go over towards these lines here and they're already kind of zip tied together and we just poke it through those zip ties and just follow that straight on all the way back. Our line continues on all the way back here towards our fitting. You're going to find this fitting. This is the female quick connect fitting and you're going to receive this in the same package in your kit that you'll find your quick connects that we, our T-fittings that we put in line between our metered and our supplier. You'll find this in the same bag with the hardware. We just held this up here right below our seven pole, checked to make sure we had proper clearance underneath, and then we used a quarter inch drill bit. We just marked the holes, used a quarter inch drill bit then to drill out the two holes for the bracket here, and then we used the hardware that came supplied, which is gonna be a bolt. There's fender washers on top, we use the fender washers, which do come with the kit because this is a fiberglass panel, so that extra surface area is going to ensure that it stays secure and strong on there. And then it just slides through our bracket and we finish it off with a nylon lock nut on each one of those fasteners. So now we've got it pulled behind our motor home. We've gone ahead and made our connections and we've got an assistant in the motor home who's going to press the brake so we can see that it operates here at the vehicle. So go ahead and hit the brake. 
And we can see there that when he hits the brake, it does apply our pedal. And what's great about this braking system is that it's completely proportional. So the harder you hit the brake in your motorhome, the harder it will apply the pedal here in the vehicle. If you need to hit it nice and soft, it will apply it softly here so you can get a very smooth braking performance. So here we've, we've got it behind our motorhome here. We've made all those typical connections. This is the airline that you'll need to connect on your vehicle up to your motorhome here. And that's what's gonna give you that signal from your air brake system to your Air Force One. Also make sure you hook up your breakaway switch cable. That'll hook to your breakaway switch on one end and then to your hitch on the other end. Once you've got all of your flat toe connections made, at this point, you're ready to put your vehicle into flat tow mode and hit the road. And that completes our look at Demco's Air Force One on our 2019 Ford F-150.